Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nan Jiang, and I will give a presentation about our paper, Pure Code Aware Neural Machine Translation for Automatic Program Repair. This work is done in collaboration with Thibaut Lutlier from University of Waterloo and our advisor, Professor Lin Tan from Purdue University. Manually fixing bugs is time consuming, as developers spend half of their time fixing them. Thus, Automatic program repair, which in short is APR, is crucial to reduce manual software debugging efforts. And in recent years, many neural machine translation-based APR tools have been developed. These NMT-based tools first use their patch training data and a tokenizer to construct the search space, and then use the training data to train NMT models. And in practice, for a given bug, they use the trained NMT models to rank patches in the search space and use a search strategy to select candidate patches. Since finding the patches of highest score is exponentially expensive, thus, these tools choose to use Beam Search strategy. Beam Search is a graded search algorithm which uses breadth first search to build the search tree, and at every step, it selects the most promising nodes to expand. By using Beam Search, APR tools can generate a list of most promising candidate patches efficiently. Finally, the candidate patches are validated against the developer written test suits until they find and output the correct patch that makes the patched program pass all the test suits. However, NMT based APR tools also have limitations. First, their search spaces miss the correct patches of some bugs. And second, existing NMT models and the Beam search strategy generate a lot of uncompatible patches. This is a bug in our benchmark, where the line in yellow background is the buggy line and the line in green background is the correct patch that we hope to generate. However, we found existing NMT based tool generate many uncompatible patches that disobey the Java syntax. The first two call the method with the wrong number of arguments, and the third one mismatches the parentheses. This shows the NMT model doesn't learn programming language well. Besides, it also generates uncompatible patches that contain invalid identifiers. The red identifiers in these two patches are not declared in the project. This shows the Beam search is AEE is the validity of identifiers. And in order to address these limitations, we propose Pure. In order to learn Java programming language, we propose a new APR architecture that combines a pre-trained programming language model with NMT architecture. And to generate valid identifiers, we design a new code-aware search strategy. Besides, Pure also applied subword tokenization technique to construct the better search space that contains more correct patches. As a result, Pure correctly fixes 83 bugs in two Java benchmarks, outperforming all the existing APR tools. Given the time, I will only focus on the first and second points to show how the programming language model and the code-aware search strategy helps Cure generate more compilable and correct patches. The details about the third points can be found in our paper. To learn programming language, we borrow the pre-training and fine-tuning workflow from natural language processing field. Pre-training and fine-tuning have brought significant improvement to many natural language processing tasks. One would pre-train a general language model on a large natural language corpus to learn a natural language, for example, then he could fine-tune the language model for a specific task like question answering. The language model learns the English syntax during the training, which improves the quality and accuracy of question answering. So similarly, we pre-trained a GPT model which refers to generative pre-trained transformer on Java code base to learn Java syntax. We choose GPT as the architecture of our programming language model because it's good at generation. The benefit is that existing NMT-based APR tools only use patches to train the NMT models, which only sees partial code snippets, 
Well, our programming language model is trained on millions of complete developer written Java methods, which helps the programming language model to learn Java syntax and how developers write code. Then during fine tuning, Cure combines the pre trained GPT programming language model with context aware convolutional network as the entire APR model and fine tune it with our patch training data. After training the APR models, in order to let the beam search select and generate valid identifiers, we design a code-aware beam search that uses a valid identifier check strategy. That is, for a given body code, Cure will use a static analysis tool to extract all the valid identifiers for this bug from the buggy file, package classes, imported classes, and Java keywords. And then, the valid identifier check strategy will force the beam search to only select and generate valid identifiers. I will use an example to help you understand how valid identifier check strategy helps to generate valid identifiers. Let's consider this tokenized correct cache that we want to generate. To simplify the process, I will use a beam size of 2. Assume that the beam search has selected the correct tokens in the first 6 steps. And in step 7, since the beam size is 2, it selects the two nodes with the highest score to expand. Here, the number in the node is the score of 8. And at step 8, for each selected node, the NMT model will calculate the log probability and a score for all the tokens. And the beam search will select the best two to expand, which are colored gray. And at step 9, after the NMT model calculates the score, the vanilla beam search will select ending and here to expand, since they have higher scores. And now, the blue pass to the correct patch is discarded since max is not selected, and we miss the correct patch forever. However, with valid identifier check strategy, it easily knows that this red path contains an invalid identifier, max underscore here, while the blue path contains max.max, which is valid for this bug. Thus, it will set the score of here to negative infinite, as it's impossible to be correct. Then the beam search will choose ending and max to expand, which includes the path to the correct patch. In this example, the vanilla beam search misses the path to the correct patch, while the valid identifier check strategy promotes it. And that's how valid identifier check strategy helps to generate valid identifiers. We evaluate here on two famous Java benchmarks, including Defects for J, which has 393 bugs, and Quicks bugs, which has 40 bugs. We compare Cure with 25 existing APR tools and only list the best ones here. Cure correctly fixes the most number of bugs on both benchmarks, outperforming all the existing APR tools. Besides, Cure also fixes bugs that haven't been fixed before. This is a bug in Defects for J benchmark that only Cure can fix. Cure fixes it by adding max.max to ensure the non-negativeness of the arguments, which is also a new fix pattern discovered by Cure. Existing NMT-based APR tools cannot fix it since this fix is uncommon in the patch training data. In our 2.7 million patch training data, there are only two similar fixes. However, Adding max.max to ensure non negativeness is common in developer written code, which is captured by our programming language model, and that's why Cure can fix it. In conclusion, in our paper, we propose a new APR architecture that combines between the programming language model and NMT architecture to learn both code syntax and fix patterns. And we propose a new code aware search strategy to find the more correct patches. We also apply subword tokenization to APR task to create better search space. And by combining all the novelties above, we develop Cure for automatic program repair, which fixes 83 bugs in two Java benchmarks. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your listening. 
Hello again, everybody. Um, we are starting with our last paper today, and we have Nan Jiang and Lin Tan with us. Uh, Nan will be in charge of uh, answering any questions you may have about this uh, great work they have uh, they have done. So so far we have one question. So you can we have time for more questions, okay? Because there's only one so far. And okay, so Nan. Uh, Guru Bandari is asking, well, first of all, he's congratulating you for your nice work. And he's asking, did you also calculate other performance measures like accuracy and F1 measure, etc.? In your paper, you have used bug related keywords to classify the bug or not. How did you handle the false positive issues? Okay, yeah, it's a good question. So first, um, we follow the previous APR work to use the uh, to calculate how many correct fixes and how many plausible patches our tool could generate, it. and then we compare our work with previous APR work uh, with such matrix, and um, and our work could generate um, our work could generate the most correct fixes and also most plausible patches than previous works. And here, the, the correct fixes means the, uh, the fix is exactly what the developer expected. And the plausible fix means the fix me makes the program pass the test suit, but it's, but it's still not incorrect. So in this case, you could calculate the, the kind of po false positive by, uh, by, you, you could, uh, by, you, by using the plausible Patches minus the correct fixes to get the false positive. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's the matrix we use. Okay, um, and about the false positive issues, um, how did you handle the false positive issues in your yeah, work? Yeah, actually, I uh, I think um, most APR tools could generate false positive patches that is the the plus of patches and, and and that is still incorrect so it's uh i think there's several reasons the first one is the model is still not good enough so the model doesn't rank the correct one higher enough or the search strategy is not intelligent enough to find the correct one and the second thing is uh we might need more um test cases to help us filter the, the incorrect but uh, plausible ones. So this is uh, something that's... Okay, thank you very much for your answers. For the moment there are no... Yes, there's one more question just pop up. So Amir, uh, Amir, Amir, Amir is asking, what are the next steps for improving the model? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So um, by analyzing the limitation of our current model, we find that, um, yeah, although we could fix the most bugs, we still have some limitations. Like first, we find the, the model, uh, the compatible rate of the candidate patches generated by our model is still not high enough. So uh, based, on our, based on our analyzation, we find it, uh, our model cure could generate only about 40% of compatible patches. So that still wastes a lot of candidate patches. So we, we would like to introduce the identifier information during training stage. Um, since our current work only try only design the code aware search, search strategy to involve the identifier information during beam search. And, in, and for the model's training, we use the GPT programming language model to let itself to learn the Java syntax. So our future work might be introduce the uh, Java syntax or compiler information during training to, to hard code this uh, such knowledge into the model to, uh, to make the model be better aware of the software code characteristics. Yeah, that's okay. part of the future work. Thank you very much. There's one more question from Haipeng Kai. And he says, well, he's first congratulating you for your great uh, talk and your nice work and the question is the following have you considered testing the train model against a totally different data set from the training data set 
Mm. Yeah, currently we we evaluate our model on two benchmarks, including defects for G and quick sparks. So uh, yeah, so we could we could explore other uh, data sets such as beer stuff jar, which uh, which we are trying to explore in our future project. So in our future project, we, we might introduce more te test benchmarks and yeah, and evaluate our APR tools and compare compare them. Okay, thank you very much. So hi hi Ben Kai also wants to know if you will release the code for cure because he mentions that currently only the data set is available. Uh, yeah, sure. We, uh, we, um, yeah, I think we will try to release the code in the future. So currently we are, we are still in trying to manage the code. And then after that, we could release the code and also the data set on our Git, GitHub repository. Okay, thank you. Amir Mir is, uh, has another question. He wonders whether you could use transformers for this task. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So um, our our current model use GPT for the pre-training programming language model and use convolutional network for the neural machine translation model. Um, so act, so first, the GPT programming language model actually is transformer based. So it so it's it's already used transformers. And then for the neural machine translation parts, there are previous work states that convolutional network might be better to capture code information than transformer because code is not right linearly and and the convolutional network could could capture the code information in different granularity well the transformer or lstm uh, or, or such uh, recurrent neural networks uh encoding this code sequ sequentially which it, uh, which might not be the best model to consider. OK, so thank you very much. Hi, Penkai has one more question. But since he has asked a previous one, we are going to start first with Carl Chapman, OK? Uh, Carl Chapman is congratulating you for your very interesting results. And his question is, out of all the things you could try, how did you decide on the code aware search and sub word tokenization? Did you try other approaches that did not work? Mm. Okay, that's a that's an interesting question. So, um, so actually, what we did is first we analyzed the limitation of the existing an existing neural neural machine translation based APR tools, and and then we find out. There are issues, including the the lack of code awareness and the uh, and the out of vocabulary token problem, and then we design our own architecture. So so the applying of subword tokenization is is actually widely used in natural language processing field. So it and and has been shown very powerful to address the out of vocabulary problem. So we just apply it, and actually we it help help to address the uh, the the limitation quite well. And then for the code awareness, um, we, we we apply the we apply the best performed language model in natural language processing field, which is the GPT model, and and our code aware beam search is fully designed by us. I think um, yeah, and and the experiment shows our novel combination is quite uh, successful. So. In our future work, we will also try other approaches, such as leverage applying the identifying information in training stage, so which we haven't tried. OK, so we have only 30 seconds left. So there is one more question from Haipen Kai. Um, so maybe you can answer his last question um, in the private discussion room, OK? Uh, yeah. yeah, there's not enough time. So thank you, everyone, for attending this session. Thank you very much to Lynn and to Nan for being here and answering the questions.